公民总主笔。Welcome to Residence Messenger Program on Taipei Broadcasting Station with your host Ross Darrell Feingold. Today, our very, very special guest. You know, all our guests are special, but today it's just a very, very special guest. Is Ambassador Tom Cho, Cho Taiju. Did I say it correctly, Ambassador? Well, you speak a very good Mandarin. Thank you, Ambassador. <laughs>、uh, Ambassador,、uh, after a long career in the Foreign Service of of Taiwan, is now the Commissioner for External Affairs of the Taipei City Government. Welcome to the show. Okay, thank you. It's my pleasure、uh, to be here today. Yeah, great. We're going to talk about what you do in the Taipei City Government. We'll talk、yeah. a bit about your career as a diplomat as well. But before we do that, let's step all the way back.、Uh, when you were a child, where, where did you grow up in Taiwan? Well, I grew up in Xinzhou City. That is,、uh, you can you may call it uh, uh, Silicon Valley. Of mm. Taiwan, mm. not back then though, was it? <laughs> <laughs> back then there were there were no semiconductor factories, right? <laughs> so Xinzhou、uh, is my hometown.、Mm. Uh, you know, I grew up there, and、uh, before entering into、uh, university.、Mm-hmm. Now, when you were a child, did you imagine a, a, a career、uh, that would be so international that you would travel around the world for 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 government work? You would.、Uh, Be meeting foreigners in Taiwan like you do in your current job. Is that something you you thought about as a child, or did you have some other dream when you were growing up? Well,、uh, very honestly,、uh, before I enter entering university, I had no clue about my future.、Mm-hmm. So,、uh, but、uh, nevertheless, I think uh, uh, university degree is a ticket.、Uh, For a better career,、mm-hmm. so now, this, this is my idea. Now you're being very modest because、uh, you actually went to the Central Police University. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's not just any university. That's kind of <laughs> that's kind of interesting. So your your first career before、yeah. you became a diplomat, before、yeah. you became a, a spokesman for the Taipei City Government, you, you actually were a police officer. Yeah.、Uh, in fact,、uh, wait. But before you continue, did you bring、yeah. a gun today? <laughs> <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> well. Uh, also, this is a quite uh, uh, not uh, my expectations、uh, before I participate in the exam examination for、uh, Central Police University.、Uh, in fact, that is uh, uh, two or three months before、uh, I have to register、uh, mm-hmm. to participate in that、uh, that examinations.、Mm-hmm. Uh, a friend of mine,、uh, we we stay in the same village. He told me,、uh, "This is a good university.、Uh, the best,、uh, the the greatest advantage is we. I don't have to pay for my tuition, <laughs> and、uh, when I graduate, I get a job." Yeah. So、uh, my father was、uh, a lieutenant colonel、mm. uh, who served in the army for uh, uh, for more than thirty years. Uh, so uh, I just uh, he he is not so rich、uh, can afford me to go for the.、Uh, Uh, even uh, further uh, to pursue my uh, uh, better career,、mm-hmm. so、um, I chose to uh, uh, take. Uh, I took the exam and then passed. I also passed the examination for the、uh, joint entrance for the university.、Mm-hmm. I choose. I choose the、uh, Central Police U- U- University. That's purely be- because of the、uh, economic consideration.、Mm-hmm. Uh, when you look back on your time as a police officer before you went on to do any things,、mm-hmm. uh, other things.、Yeah. What's like one story that you remember most? One experience about being a, when people ask you like, tell us something, tell us something interesting about being a police officer. Give us a story. Well, my first assignment was in、uh, Hualien、mm-hmm. Harbor Police Bureau.、Mm-hmm. Uh, other than foreign affair, I also was a、uh, judo coach、mm-hmm. uh, for police officer. No wonder you don't need a gun. You're also a judo expert. <laughs> yeah. So I was a、uh, I was a coach a judo coach. Mm-hmm. I remember vividly、uh, on my first、uh, teaching class.、Uh, I think uh, 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 one、uh, young police officer、uh, who was、uh, roughly about more than eighty kilo. A big kilo, guy. Is a big guy.、Uh, he volunteered himself, want to compete with me the first time, first day,、mm-hmm. and、uh, I, I was then very skinny. I was、uh, roughly about sixty kilograms,、mm-hmm. and so、uh, he's a、uh, very big. So I did.、Uh, I did not disappoint the audience. Yeah. I I threw him on、uh, on the floor three times in two minutes.、Uh, mm-hmm. Since then, no one will question or doubt it.、Uh, 
uh, my uh, capability as a qualified uh, judo coach. Uh, that is uh, my interesting experience. So it sounds like you had a, a good reputation in, in the police uh, agency, but then you, you switched to diplomacy, and you had to take another exam for that as well. Oh, yes, I had to take an exam. Uh, the incentive for my, I want to change uh, the career from police officer to the uh, diplomat, uh, there was an inter interesting story. In 1980s, you know, uh, that time I had a girlfriend. Mm -hmm. uh, mother of uh, the girlfriend uh, very care about my profession. Mm -hmm. uh, she she did not like her daughter marry a police officer or the uh, military uh, officer because mm -hmm. uh, they work uh, their uh, work is very dangerous. Mm -hmm. And uh, so so therefore uh, the mother of my girlfriend uh, told me uh, he she. We'll agree the marriage. Mm -hmm. uh, however, I have to become a diplomat. <laughs> so uh, uh, I studied very hard. It's not easy. I mean, there's there's only a small number of places every year to uh, enter. Right? Yeah, but the fact is, you know, the girlfriend somehow turned into uh, she's my wife now. I mean, I'm glad it worked out. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I studied very hard. <laughs> Okay, so you said your 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 future mother-in-law at the time. Yeah. She she didn't want her daughter to marry a, a military officer or policeman because it might be dangerous. But then you 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 pass the exam, you become a diplomat, yeah. and you go to South Africa, yeah. <laughs> which yeah. was not a safe place at the time. <laughs> well, in fact, I I've been assigned to uh, South Africa. You know that my my uh, office uh, was in Cape Town, South Africa. Mm. Uh, it's a beautiful country. Mm. And not so dangerous as uh, you uh, you might think. Mm -hmm. uh, uh, from the first day when uh, the airplane touched down to the airport mm -hmm. uh, in Cape Town, I found the place is so beautiful mm -hmm. and uh, the country is so advanced. Mm -hmm. uh, the highway system is is very modern, modernized. Mm -hmm. So I, I'm very very impressed. Well, a lot of that was with Taiwan's help over uh, the years, right? A lot of Taiwan investors no, went you know, in there. Uh, you, you know. South Africa is, uh, was very powerful uh, nations. You know, uh, during my tenure, uh, between 1986 to 1992, mm -hmm. um, South Africa's GDP, uh, I think, is the whole continent, uh, African continent, is 45 percent. Mm -hmm. So it's very powerful, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, everybody know that uh, in that time there, there was apartheid. Mm -hmm. And between uh, my tenure, ed, between 86 to 92, it was uh, a time. The apartheid was slowly fading away. And Mandela was released from prison when you were there. Oh yeah, so I saw what happened over there during that period of time. So uh, because of uh, this experience, it enabled me to understand why President De Klerk and Mandela they won uh, the Nobel Peace Prize in 1993. Mm -hmm. So this is a quite uh, amazing transformations uh, from the. Uh, you know, like a dictatorship, uh, you know, uh, country into the democratic one. Which was occurring at the same time, right here in Taiwan, while you were in <laughs> South Africa. <laughs> yeah, it's quite, quite a big difference. And, and then you also served as ambassador to St. Lucia, which has yeah. diplomatic relations with uh, the Republic of China on, on Taiwan. Yeah. What was it like being there? Was it just as beautiful as South Africa? You know, because it's in the Caribbean, we think of it as, you know, everything must be beautiful and palm trees and beaches. And Yeah, it's a big difference. I think, uh, I believe you agree with that. Uh, many other countries in Caribbean, uh, they are paradise for uh, those who uh, like, uh, you know, tourists around the world. Mm -hmm. um, you know, in, in that uh, small island country, the very popular uh, thing is that is a uh, uh, coconut tree, uh, mm -hmm. sunshine, mm -hmm. and beautiful beaches, mm -hmm. and run in hand. <laughs> very much a relaxed uh, environment. But you do do a lot of work as well. <laughs> oh, yeah, yeah. My, my main task uh, over the, the embassy over there uh, was uh, a program. Mm -hmm. A program, uh, for me, I targeted, you know, the three kind of people uh, I want to take care of. Uh, farmers, students, and uh, this advantage group. Mm -hmm. So uh, um, I somehow, uh, in collaboration with the uh, Prime Minister of uh, St. Vincent and St. Lucia, mm -hmm. uh, we figured out a very good uh, mechanism. Uh, we can, when we, when uh, the Prime Minister, uh, for example, 
in St. Lucia. Prime Minister and I agree with certain project. We can kick off, uh, you know, the construction uh, mm -hmm. process uh, in two weeks. Mm -hmm. So uh, uh, I think I have done a lot of uh, uh, projects for uh, for the benefit of the local people. You know, instead of the grand project, I don't I I do not uh, favor grand project. Mm -hmm. I prefer uh, a small projects which can benefit uh, those people uh, directly and mm -hmm. have a, a more significant significant uh, impact. Mm -hmm. uh, take for example, if you build a stadium, you probably need about five million US dollar mm -hmm. with the same amount. Uh, I can repair or renovate uh, so-called sports field mm -hmm. uh, of the schools mm -hmm. and the local communities. Multiple schools, multiple communities, not yeah. just one. <laughs> yeah, and then uh, in this way, uh, I can benefit uh, more local people mm -hmm. and, uh, um, uh, and create more jobs. And because they, they receive the wage uh, from uh, from the project, mm -hmm. so they spend the money in the, uh, their communities. Mm -hmm. So there will be this uh, economic spin off effect. Mm -hmm. So uh, that becomes uh, very very pop, uh, popular. Mm -hmm. So therefore, uh, I I think uh, I spent altogether I spent about eight years uh, in uh, these two country. Mm -hmm. uh, is in particular in San Lucia. Uh, I was very very touched by the reward of my hard work of there. Uh, I won the so-called, um, I was uh, named by the local media uh, in St. Lucia, May of the year 2009. Mm -hmm. And uh, lo another thing is uh, in uh, 2017, uh, five years after I depart uh, from St. Lucia, I was told there's a local new restaurant named after me. <laughs> what kind of food did it serve? <laughs> well, they, they said Tom Cho restaurant and bar. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe the focus was on the bar more than the restaurant. <laughs> <laughs> well, that I'm going to ask you a really tough question because yeah. you, you were in this beautiful part of the world. You were very popular. You're doing a lot of good things. You were there for many years. Did you ever think of just staying there, not coming back to Taiwan? <laughs> well, you know, uh, <laughs> just retire early and stay there <laughs> with your with, a, with the beach and the coconuts and the rum. <laughs> yeah. I, I think that both countries like uh, both St. Lucia and uh, St. Vincent and, and the Grenadines, mm. they are beautiful country. But uh, uh, for my career, I have to, as a career diplomat, I had to move on. You uh, go where, you go when they tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. then you went to New York. Yeah. You, were, you worked in the, the, tech, uh, the TACO in, in New York City. And I'm from New York City, so of course oh. I think it's a great place. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> what, what do you remember most about your time in, in New York City representing Taiwan? Well, for the ordinary people, uh, they would think New York uh, is a wonderful place uh, for uh, sightseeing, for shopping, uh, or uh, this is a, a New uh, Manhattan mm -hmm. uh, is a, a world's uh, financial center. Mm -hmm. uh, um, but I, I was too busy uh, to enjoy New York. Mm -hmm. uh, I can give you an example. As a deputy director general of our office in New York, I have to attend, in, uh, on average, 450 activities per year. Is that because there's a lot of overseas Taiwanese living in the area? Yeah, so therefore, uh, you can imagine, I do not have uh, much time for the leisure activity. You should go to a Mets game or a Yankees game at least. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and, uh, well, um, I think uh, I had some uh, very in interesting experience. If someone asked me, can you describe what it looks like in New York? I said, well, if you enter into the elevators, mm -hmm. uh, everybody talks. Mm -hmm. No one speaks English. <laughs> very diverse, you know, yeah. uh, uh, city. Yeah. So, uh, but another thing that's very shocking uh, to me, uh, that is the 911. Mm -hmm. Two months after uh, I arrived in New York, it happened. Mm -hmm. It, uh, you know, it created a huge impact, mm -hmm. not only to uh, United States uh, as well to, to the world. Mm -hmm. It changed, uh, you know, the culture or, or the business at the airport. Mm -hmm. uh, soon after that happened, I, I remember if you want to travel uh, through the airport in New York, you, you had to book, you had to ride three hours mm -hmm. uh, before uh, the departure time. Mm -hmm. So uh, that is a, a very unforgettable experience. Mm -hmm. 
And then uh, one of your final assignments uh, in the Foreign Service, you were representative to another beautiful country, the Netherlands. Yeah, yeah Netherlands. You've been so fortunate to be posted to such nice places. <laughs> <laughs> well, uh, Netherlands, is, you know, my wife said uh, she enjoyed the most, in, mm -hmm. you know, assignment overseas, that is uh, Netherlands. Mm -hmm. Which has a, a very important, uh, not just cultural relation with Taiwan because of the history of yeah. the Dutch were here hundreds of years yeah. ago, uh, but, but the business relationship between Taiwan and the Netherlands is very, very important. Philips was a, a very important investor in Taiwan's semiconductor industry. You mentioned the Xinjiang oh. earlier. Right? Oh, yeah. I think, uh, firstly, the Netherlands is Taiwan's second largest trading partner mm -hmm. uh, in Europe, just after the Germany. Mm -hmm. uh, last year, 2019, the two way trade between the Netherlands and Taiwan was about uh, 13.7 billion US dollars. Mm -hmm. And uh, and also, as, as you just mentioned, uh, the Netherlands is uh, Taiwan's uh, largest foreign in investor mm -hmm. uh, since 1952. Uh, uh, mm -hmm. So uh, the total figures, if I remember uh, correctly, very close to 40 billion US dollars. Mm -hmm. So uh, I think uh, the, the Dutch people does know how to do business. Mm -hmm. I, I guess uh, the uh, the close part partnership between TSMC and ASML mm -hmm. is a very eye-catching, you know, mm -hmm. uh, cooperation. Uh, you have the microphone. Well, so, what's something about Dutch culture oh. that, that Taiwanese might <laughs> be surprised to know? Well, I I a bit fascinated uh, by the idea of let's go t Dutch. <laughs> uh, um, I, you know, there was a one occasion, uh, 10 people uh, at the, the uh, dinner party. After the meal, each one uh, used their, uh, their own credit card to pay for what they eat. If you eat a lobster, you should pay more. If you eat just a steak, you also pay more. If something else, you know, pay less. That's very different than here, where everyone is racing to be the one, you know, because of face, right? Yeah. Here, like, you know, everyone I mean, right? They don't want to be the one who pays. Right. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, in Taiwan, what happened is, you know, maybe one, uh, you know, uh, one people to pay for, uh, for all, or at least, uh, you know, uh, they would uh, get a bill and divide by ten. Yeah. Uh, each one get a fair e share. Equal, yeah. But yeah. but in, in the Netherlands, they really do go Dutch. <laughs> yeah, they're very accurate. You you eat what you know. Uh, you pay uh, for what what you eat. Okay, we're we're going to take a very short break, and when we come back, uh, we'll talk more about Ambassador Cho's work in the Taipei city government. You're listening to Residence Messenger on Taipei Broadcasting Station. Welcome back to Residence Messenger on Taipei Broadcasting Station with your host, Ross Darrell Feingold, and our very, very special guest today, Ambassador Tom Cho, who is the Commissioner for External Affairs of the Taipei City Government. Ambassador, after decades working as, as a diplomat representing Taiwan overseas, uh, you have a second career now. Uh, you, you switch from central government yeah. to local government. To, yeah. uh, even though it's a big city, it's still local government. Why did you decide that you still wanted to serve? What, 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 what is it? Why didn't you just retire? <laughs> Why did you still want to take, take on this job of joining the city government? Well, firstly, uh, I'm, I still not uh, yet retire from Minister of Foreign Affairs. In fact, uh, uh, technically speaking, uh, Minister of Foreign Affairs uh, lent me to the Taipei City Government. Yeah, it's, it's like those those soccer players that get went from one European yeah. team to another one. <laughs> so in fact, I still you know I belong to the Ministry of Foreign Affairs. Mm -hmm. I come here. Uh, many of my good friends ask me why you want to join the Taipei City Government, mm -hmm. and uh, well, you know, Mayor Kerr is very strict, uh, you know, very demanding. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, um, I think the reason why I want to join the Taipei City Government is I had a, a I had a very good contact uh, with uh, Mayor uh, Kerr before I joined the Taipei City Government. In, in January 2018, mm -hmm. uh, Mayor Kerr led a delegation to visit Netherlands for about four days. It was a time I made uh, a very good arrangement uh, for him and his delegation to visit uh, three major cities, uh, that is uh, Utrecht, uh, Antwerpen, and Amer. Mm -hmm. uh, I think that uh, their visit uh, his visit was very successful, 
So uh, maybe he got a, a good impression of me. So uh, when I re uh, you know, uh, finished my term in the Netherlands, I came back to Taiwan at the end of 2018, uh, he asked some, uh, someone to approach me to see whether if I can uh, join Taipei city government to help him uh, to manage the international and cross-trade relations. Mm -hmm. So I guess uh, this is a good opportunity. And also, uh, I, I agree with uh, uh, his philosophy of governing the uh, city. And also, uh, he stick to the principle, his principle as uh, uh, transparency and uh, uh, integrity and financial discipline. I think mm -hmm. he's a good mayor. So uh, I decide to. Uh, this is why I decide to join him. Out, uh, you know, after uh, more than a year, I I stay in the Taipei City government. Uh, I think he he is a he's a one. Uh, he's not a politician. In uh, in my opinion, he's a statesman. Uh, I think he's the main uh, focus. Uh, he always put the citizens' uh, interest uh, at his heart. Mm. So uh, that touched me. Well, I agree with you. That that's because I work here at the Taipei City Government Radio Station, so I better <laughs> I better agree. Uh, t tell us a little bit about how the operations of a city government mm. differ from the operation of the central government. Right. So you've seen how the Ministry of Foreign Affairs operates. You've seen how it interacts with other central government agencies, like the Presidential Office and different yeah. parts of the Executive UN. What about a city government? Even though it's a big city government, what, what's the big differences between a city government and the central government? This is a good question. Well, I think the city government level um, will uh, take care of uh, citizens' daily life, uh, big or small. And the, uh, the city government mainly focus on the implementation of the policy. And why the central government, uh, their uh, main job focus on the uh, policy making and uh, coordinating uh, among cities. So it, it's a difference. I think that this is the implementation and the policy uh, making. Mm -hmm. So this is my, uh, my first impression. Mm -hmm. And what, what have you observed uh, or as examples of things that the city government does very well for the residents. Now you mentioned yeah. the mayor believes in transparency, and yeah. I think most most uh, people who live in Taipei would agree. But you know, there's no scandals with the mayor, and yeah. uh, a lot of things are available on the internet and information. But uh, for those of us who don't interact on a regular basis with the city government, you know, we don't know everything the city government does. Yeah. Tell us some things that the city government really does well for the citizens that maybe those of us who are in the public we wouldn't realize. I think the ordinary citizen, uh, they would prefer large and tangible project mm -hmm. uh, instead of, uh, most of the time, they, uh, they might ignore uh, the small projects, mm -hmm. uh, which might have uh, uh, direct and more significant impact on citizens' uh, life. i just uh, give you uh, uh, two examples. First, uh, we had the so-called uh, uh, so called Tai uh, is a called uh, Taipei Traffic Improvement Project. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a project, uh, the city government uh, will uh, make a lot of uh, parking lot and uh, pen uh, one meter wide uh, sidewalk at the street and alley. Mm -hmm. That improved tremendously. Uh, the uh, the safety uh, or the uh, safety of the street and lanes, and also um, also the the parking problems. Mm -hmm. So uh, it looks not a big uh, project, but it did it had a, a very huge positive impact on the uh, citizens' uh, daily life. Mm -hmm. uh, this is a, this is one second one that is uh, let me see um, this. Uh, yeah, market, mm -hmm. market construction. Mm -hmm. Market construction is also uh, very important. Uh, uh, previous uh, mayors, 
they, uh, they are hesitant to do the market construction because they, you need a lot of work. Uh, it will take many years uh, mm -hmm. to complete. And the vendors got to leave while, while you're rebuilding one of the traditional markets. Yeah, as well. it's, 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 a, uh, uh, it's a very big job. Mm -hmm. So no uh, previous mayor would like to do, do uh, the job. Uh, mayor uh, is that uh, he chose to, to tackle this mm -hmm. issue. So uh, I believe you, you know that there are several uh, market being uh, reconstructed, mm -hmm. and uh, uh, well, not only uh, Mayo could keep the uh, the more beautiful, modernized uh, market, mm -hmm. but also raise the hygiene level, mm -hmm. and also can reflect the uh, improvement of uh, you know the uh, type his uh, improvement of the society. Mm -hmm. So this is a. This is a two uh, very typical example. This is a small project, but big impact on the quality of life. Yeah. As you mentioned hygiene. Uh, let's talk a little bit about COVID nineteen and, yeah. and the virus. Uh, uh, a lot of the work is done by the central government. They yeah. they seem to want to let the public know that they're responsible for for a lot. They want the credit as well. Yeah. Uh, tell us tell us though what the city government does with regard to. Uh, prevention, testing, and things like that. What's the city government's role in keeping the public healthy? Well, um, I think that, uh, regarding to the COVID-19 crisis, uh, there's a two level. One is the central government level, one is the uh, city government's level. For the central government's level, uh, their main responsibility is uh, uh, keep our border uh, under control. Yeah. So you know what happened is, uh, uh, at the, at the beginning of this year, when we learned there's a something something uh, happened in Wuhan, so central government sent uh, uh, CDC, uh, uh, CDC Central Disease Control Agency uh, people over there uh, in mid uh, January. Mm -hmm. uh, after they returned to Taiwan, they found this is a very serious. So in one week, uh, you know, they decide to uh, to uh, to monitor and do some. Uh, Epidemic prevention measure uh, for the, those passengers from Wuhan, and later we can, we bar all the passengers from from China. That this is very critical, and also uh, the central government decide to uh, increase uh, the cup, you know uh, the production of the of the mask. Mm -hmm. So this is a very good policy from the central government. But for the city government, uh, we our responsibility is to. Uh, to monitor and take care of those uh, confirmed cases, mm -hmm. and also those who need to be quarantined. Mm -hmm. So uh, this uh, this is uh, uh, our uh, uh, strategy, and also in, in the same time we try to increase uh, the quarantine institutions mm -hmm. uh, to prepare for uh, more patients, mm -hmm. and also uh, we we also start uh, the international co uh, collaboration. Mm -hmm. uh, with some uh, other, other major city around the world, uh, mm -hmm. because we believe that uh, if we want to eradicate or we want to deal with the crisis of the COVID-19, uh, we should need a uh, global co collaborations. Mm -hmm. So this is uh, our strategy. So this explains why uh, Mayor Kerr asked us to uh, to integrate all the our experience we share with uh, uh, other major city around the world. Mm -hmm. So even though the virus situation is preventing travel for the most part, yeah. uh, you're still able to maintain these relationships with other cities around the world by yeah. uh, video conference and uh, yeah. things like that. Yeah, I think that the the most uh, uh, popular issues now is how to uh, how to deal with uh, you know COVID nineteen crisis yeah. uh, because uh, Taiwan has done so well. I believe you know that until today, uh, the confirmed cases is still under still less than five hundred. And uh, with only seven dead, and uh, uh, and uh, I think about uh, last month we uh, there was a uh, uh, concert by the Eric Cho uh, attended by uh, ten thousand uh, spectators that uh, put on the news on, on the CNN. Yeah, uh, that is uh, old times, mm -hmm. and also uh, in in Taipei City, uh, in in the Da Dao Cheng, we have. Uh, more than 80,000 people uh, participate in that acti activities. Uh, this is a stunning uh, 
you know, action by, uh, by Taiwan. The most important part is after the activities, we do not have community infections. Yeah, very different than, unfortunately, my country. When <laughs> In America, when they have big outdoor events with, attended by a lot of people over the summer, we do know that uh, there are uh, virus cases that, that occur after that because people aren't wearing masks or social distancing. Uh, the mayor has a little over two years left yeah. in his term. He can't yeah. run for office again. I won't ask you if he's running yeah, for yeah. president. You don't have to comment <laughs> on that. Uh, well, what are some projects that the mayor and the team uh, are, are trying to achieve in the remaining two years uh, that Mayor Co will be the mayor of Taipei City? I tell you, man, honestly, uh, I attend to the morning uh, session meeting every day, start from 7.30. Uh, which, which the mayor is famous for, <laughs> 7.30 meeting. <laughs> yeah, uh, between 7.30 to 9 o'clock, yeah. this is a so-called morning session meeting. This is a very important meeting. Uh, this is a meeting where a mayor Co will make an important decision, or some project uh, went wrong or delayed. Uh, you know, they will uh, review the case and find out what happened. Mm. This is an important case. And I never, he never told that before uh, 2022nd mm. or 2024, mm. he wanted to, uh, uh, you know, finish uh, how many projects. I, I, I tell you very honestly, the mayor Kerr's first priority is uh, uh, well-being of the type of city uh, citizen. Mm -hmm. uh, so uh, in his consideration, he's, I do, I, so far, still not, uh, un, at least until now, uh, there is no so-called before uh, 2022nd we want to do uh, any special, special project. I can tell you, uh, I, I, I won't be able to tell you how many projects, I know there's a, quite a lot of projects are going on. And, uh, you know, the good project, uh, huge project, you need uh, many years to, to complete. Uh, it'll but it'll think, be finished after he's mayor, but he doesn't care, right? He's about good day-to-day. Yeah, day-to-day yeah. -day, uh, yeah. you know, uh, improvement. Mm -hmm. uh, but I think the one is uh, Taipei Arena. Mm -hmm. Everybody... Uh, controversy. Uh, yeah, yeah, there's a controversy. And uh, this will be completed at the end of next year. Mm. Uh, you, you've also served as, as a spokesperson for, for the city government. Yeah. Tell us a, a funny story or a funny request. You know, the media asked something that you felt was so outrageous or unreasonable or strange because you know the Taiwan media can be very aggressive even though I'm a nice guy yeah. uh, but but the media can be very aggressive uh, give us an example of, of some kind of really outrageous or funny requests from, from media don't name the media of course <laughs> well I I think you know uh, quite well uh, what is uh, our media in Taiwan and uh, well whenever there's a criticism uh, to type city governments, we take it very seriously. Mm -hmm. uh, even sometimes uh, there's a joke, or sometimes uh, they would just uh, try to make the government, uh, city government, look very bad. But we, we always uh, uh, deal with it very seriously, and uh, we believe the criticism is a motivation of uh, type city government's improvement. Mm -hmm. So we we take uh, my point is uh, you know we take it very seriously. And uh, uh, there's no very bad feeling, although it, sometimes you will feel very uncomfortable mm. uh, when uh, the, the unfair criticism on, on mayors. Mm. Uh, I guess uh, he's, he confronted with this uh, issue mm. uh, in a very reasonable manner. Yeah, he doesn't seem to lose his temper that much. <laughs> yeah, I think I'm very surprised. At least uh, in public he doesn't. <laughs> yeah, but in private, you know, I. I I don't. I really don't think uh, he will hate uh, the journalist. You mm. know, if uh, they give him a very unfair criticism, mm. I think he he has quite a reasonable guy. <laughs> well, he, he, for a doctor, we call that in English bedside manner, right? Very good with the patients. So <laughs> oh, he was yeah. maybe he was good with the patients. Now he's good with the the citizens. Uh, it, we, we only have a, a couple of minutes left. Uh, is there anything else you'd like the audience to know about? the work of the Taipei city government or your work as, as a commissioner for external affairs? Well, you know, uh, I'm in charge of the external affairs in the Taipei city government. And uh, I do believe the uh, city diplomacy is the best alternative uh, to, uh, to earn the international uh, recognitions or to 
to have a good international exposures. Um, I think you all know that uh, we, we are, Taiwan has a very difficult situations in the world politics. Uh, we need uh, the support uh, from the old audience and all the citizens. Uh, together, I think we can make uh, uh, Taipei or Taiwan proud uh, internationally. Mm. Well, on that note, uh, a, a, a expression of my gratitude and thank you, Ambassador, for coming on to our show today. Uh, you've been listening to Resonance Messenger on Taipei Broadcasting Station with our special guest, Ambassador Tom Cho, the Commissioner of External Affairs for Taipei City Government. Thank you again, Ambassador. You're most welcome. <laughs> Have a good weekend. Okay. Thank you.